But I wanted to talk real quickly about receiving tonight. I wanted to talk about receiving and being in a position to receive because um, I ran across this TikTok, I think that was yesterday, and it was his man. Y'all probably saw it because it went viral. Are you from, oh no, 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 I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. So I ran across this TikTok on yesterday with this man. He was in a wheelchair and you know how those people be approaching people in the grocery store and trying to give them money if they do like a good gesture. So this the, the um, cameraman was asking the man in the wheelchair, could he give him a dollar or something to help him pay for his children? It's pampers, like, right? It was a prank. So if the man were to say yes and give him some money, then the cameraman was, you know, gonna bless, you know, his participant with $500. And I was watching that and, and the man in the wheelchair, he was pulling out all his coin up in his, his, his you know, little pouch. And he was like, here, 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 I know how it is. You know, I've been there before. And so when it was time for the man in the wheelchair to receive, the man in the wheelchair was just like, oh man, I'm 80 years old. Y'all saw that one? He was like, I'm 80 years old. I'm, 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 I'm getting by. I'm going to be all right. Bless somebody else, you know? And in the comments, you know, they talked about how beautiful that man's heart was and, and you know, how precious that moment was, so to speak. Yeah, and, and I believe that it was beautiful, you know? I believe that, you know, he has a good heart and all of that good stuff. But I was thinking about the fact that sometimes we be in positions in life but well, we don't even know how to receive, you know? The biblical text tells us and tells us, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But, but what are we really saying? <laughs> Where is not being able to receive from other people really coming from? Sometimes it be coming from our subconscious mind, well, all times, because that's where all creation be, really begins, in our subconscious mind. And so we be in positions in life where we can't even receive from people because we were always taught, you know, that we should be in a position to give. You know, church teaches us that. But with all things in life, in all things in life, there is a proper balance. So life is going to position you in a place where sometimes it's okay to give and sometimes it's okay to receive. And that doesn't mean you are a lesser person because you are receiving from another person. And I think the, the, the thing that we really get twisted is we pay more attention to who is giving you when it's your turn to receive. Just like on TikTok, we often pay more attention to the messenger instead of the message. And so that kind of could stumble us when it is our turn to receive something. We're so busy paying attention to, oh, oh, she might need it better than, you know, or more than I, I do right now. So I'm not gonna take from her. Oh no, you know, God gonna make a way. Meanwhile, your blessing is right there in front of you, but you just don't know how to receive it. And so the reason why I was talking about that is because I just really recently um, paid attention to that when it pertained to me. You know, I'm always, you know, um, being a inspiration to other people, you know, doing consultations for other people, you know, blessing other people where it became a moment where it was time for me to receive and, and I didn't want to receive and I had to check myself on that. I had to really, really check myself because other people around me was like, no, 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 it's time for you to receive, let people bless you. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be all right. But <laughs> it was a humbling experience for me to be able to check myself and pay attention to the fact that it's okay for me to receive. And that's really and truly what the um the um what they call that the amazon wish list that i have in my profile is all about because i'm moving you know i'm in a place where i've relocated and and everybody wanted to give gifts to me or give money to me per se and so i and they were like would well, you just do a little amazon wish list and you know so we could send you some things and you know, it is so humbling to receive. It's so beautiful to be able to receive too in abundance from other people, you know, and with, without, without looking at the people and saying, oh, well, I know she was going through last month. You know, I know things are tight for her. Let me not take it from her. 
So I wanted to share that with somebody who's always giving from the heart, you know, always giving to other people because you're just passionate about helping other people. You're so passionate about, you know, inspiring other people. Don't forget to create that proper balance between receiving and giving for yourself. Because what we do not want to do is be turning down the blessings that the universe or your subconscious mind created. You created the, um, the blessing and then when it is given to you, you're denying the blessing. So energetically, that is really not in sync with what you're putting out. That is really not in sync with the signal that you're putting out by thinking that you, that you desire these things. Then when it comes, you're just running from it. So I wanted to open up your mind to that idea of thought, just to stimulate thought inside of you, because oftentimes in church, we get these beliefs and these beliefs are things that we've told ourselves over and over and over until it became law in our subconscious mind. And we get this limited belief of this limited lifestyle when we were younger, maybe when we were in church about, you know, that the money is the root of all evil and that is more blessed to give than it is to receive and then you got to pay your tithes and offering first and you got to give to past and past the god get taken care of i've seen this as a little girl all the way until being an adult and even every day you know you can see this how some people just want to just give 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 even the people that don't even have that overflow even the people whose cup is empty you know they're still trying to give but sometimes it's okay to receive it's okay to receive and, and rest in that feminine energy rest in that 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 that, that, that yin, allow that yin yang energy to be in balance well, you can be the giver and the receiver. I wanted to share that with you. Let's see. Y'all in here yet? Let's see. Some people are too humble. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. They really are too humble. And, and really, to be honest with you, I feel like those are the people that really be needing to be showered more than anything, those little humble people. Because I remember when I was in church, they used to have this lady, you know, how pastor would ask for a certain amount of money. And so she asked it for a certain amount of money. Nobody didn't get up, you know, to give it. But this one lady, she would always give the most humble lady. She would give her little rent money. She would give her grocery money or whatever. She would just give, give, give. But I used to always look at that lady i used as a little girl i used to go home with her sometimes after church and she needed that blessing sometimes but she she was she was trying to focus on you know getting her now kind of faith up to par she was kind of hoping i guess that maybe that would help her better with her faith or her relationship with god so to speak and she was so humble and she was giving from a little bit you know from a little bit <laughs> Yeah, but that's a lot. That's how a lot of people are, you know, are taught and brought up that way. So I'm just saying that there's a balance in all things, for all things in life. Being able to receive, you know, being able to give, you know, even 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 with your love energy, you know, everything financially, physically, emotionally. You know, there's a balance with all things, in all things in life. Even with, you know how they talk about this um, so-called feminine energy, so to speak. So, you know, you have um, women who are evolving to be ladies or goddesses, but not realizing that, okay, feminine energy is not really just putting on makeup and having your nails done and just being, you know, you know, wearing flowy dresses, whatever. The totality of God is all. God is both yin and yang. Just like I'm talking about the giving and receiver, God is all. God is that one faith, one baptism, you know? So if you're gonna be exuding so-called feminine energy, when you get to a lady status, when you get to a goddess status, you can look at the totality of the yin and yang, the totality of feminine and masculine energy, and realize that collectively, you need both of them. You need a balance of both of them to be able to express your femininity, to be honest with you. So the flowing dresses, the nails done, the hair being done, oh, that's beautiful. But really a goddess, a goddess knows how to protect self. 
a goddess a goddess knows how to win and how to jump into masculine energy know when it is necessary and then when to be graceful sit back and receive so basically what i'm saying here is a goddess knows how to give and to receive just like god itself the totality of god itself god said i am the alpha and the omega i am the beginning and the end the first and the last says god so even when it comes to like us evolving to femininity you gotta understand that's yin and yang you know and so that's why some people they can look the part of being that feminine essence they could look like it in the physical which is at zero point zero one percent of it all like right they could look the part they could wear the dress they could do the makeup per se but yet their energy they're not nine point nine 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 percent that really everybody is feeling that aura about them is saying something totally different because guess what they didn't work on that other side of themselves they never explored the other realm of self because it's all things in this physical reality in this matrix is governed underneath the law of polarity where it's always going to be two sides to all things and what we hear as um expressions of life of, of persons or human forms what we are supposed to be doing is creating that balance with those things <laughs> in order to evolve in order to to express ourselves in a proper balance and and evolve and learn lessons and not stay on one side not just be just oh i'm just gonna be nice 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 when you pay attention you know they have the saying that oh that's why nice girls finish last well well well, it's not that they really finish last. It's that people want to experience God, you know? People want to experience you. They want to experience the totality of you. Every day ain't going to be no nice day. Every day ain't going to be sunny day. Just like we look at the um, the news, you know, the, the broadcast. It's never going to be the same temp every day. So you being this nice girl every day, you're not really showing us the totality of who you are, God. <laughs> we want to see your, your sweet and your sour, God. God. We want to see some of that yin and that yang energy. We want to see that feminine and that masculine essence that you are part of because that yin and yang is inside of you in order to be able to express itself outside of you too. <laughs> so it is important that we have balance with these things in life. <laughs> Being able to give and receive that feminine and that masculine, that beginning and that end the author and the finisher, you know? It's more exciting that way. It's more thrilling that way. We came for the thrills and chills of expansion and that's how we expand. So, so even even for people that come up in religion, I think it's a beautiful thing when you come up in religion just like I did. And in my childhood coming up in religion, I think it's beautiful that I experienced that side of myself. That was me as God expressing that side of myself. But now I'm expressing my spiritual walk, my consciousness. And so guess what? Collectively, I didn't do it wrong when I was in religion. I'm not doing it wrong while I'm in spirituality. I can never get it wrong. Cause God just is. There's no getting it wrong. It's just winning and learning. But collectively, my Christian walk, along with my spiritual walk, is the totality of God. It's just me remembering who I am. I'm bringing out this side and I'm bringing out this side. This is why really judgment shouldn't be placed on people because everybody's in a perfect place in their journey. Even the people that's coming out and shaking their butt, you know, even the people that's doing dark magic per se, you know, they go through those stages because this is all that we're doing here in the physical reality. We're just going through different stages or different states of being until we rise into the Christ conscious one. And so a state of being might be that that person in their now moment is doing their dark magic but lo and behold one day they might decide wait hold up i'm starting to realize that love heals all love is the most powerful form of energy that there is well maybe i should practice that instead maybe i should not be you know trying to do curses and and, 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 and binding things and and all this and that and other maybe i'm going to evolve Maybe I'm going to learn. Maybe I'm going to grow. And then lo and behold, then they start becoming maybe one of the light workers. But them being that dark magic worker and evolving to the light worker is just them remembering who they are. Still being God, just expressing itself at a different frequency. <laughs> I really didn't come here to say all of that stuff there. But it just I guess it just needed to be heard. Let's see. I got a glare down here let's see sending happy retirement which is your way oh thank you thank you who's that oj mac okay thank you i appreciate you 
Yeah, I did early retirement. I feel so excited about it. So accomplished about that in my life. And actually it's something that even as a little girl, even though I didn't know what I was saying, I would speak and I constantly spoke that. I constantly spoke that word throughout my adulthood life, like, you know, and my teenage life and all saying that I'm not working on my life. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna sit up there and work for somebody till I'm 55 years old. And I kind of spoke it into existence and even to my children. I would tell them, look, after you turn two or two years old, then guess what? I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna do me. <laughs> it's gonna be my turn. And so lo and behold, that day came, you know? That day came. And I'm enjoying every moment of it too. That's why I was just coming on here really to check on the um the internet service because I just got my internet installed here. Hey, you are such a beauty. Oh, thank you, Ray King. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see, your spirit is so genuine. Hey, thank you, Poppy. I appreciate it. Thanks for noticing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. But yeah, I just really wanted to come on and really talk about giving and receiving because it's, it's, it's something, a lesson that I learned about myself that I wanted to share because really life happens through me and all of you are reflections of me in the physical reality. That's why I really like to share my journey with others, in, especially if it's going to inspire somebody, especially it's going to allow you to grow because as I grow, you grow because well, we're all just singing the same song going back to it being one god one faith one baptism we all singing the same song congratulations on retirement thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate y'all when i came home too when i came home they had gifts at the front door oh man talk about being humble talk about being humble when i saw them gifts here before i even made it back to this location i just sat there and i just boohoo because I'm still a little bit emotional about this year move because it's really like a new start for me. A new start and I, I honestly, before I hit the button to hit sending that email out to my, um, my co-workers, I got hot. I'm gonna have to post that video because I recorded it myself. I got hot, I had to take my shirt off, you know, because I was in the office and mind you, I had already, um, <laughs> I had already wrote the email because I practiced the law of assumption. I had wrote the email last year and had it in my drafts. I knew that it was proofread properly and everything, spell checked and everything. But I was sitting on it waiting for the appointed time when I felt, you know, it was that time to go. But still when that time, that moment came for me, I said that I started sweating. I started crying. I got choked up. Then I had to proofread read the letter or email once again even though like i said it was perfect and then i hit send i was so nervous though but when i hit send y'all i promise you all of that energy all of those feelings the sense of unknown everything was just like it lifted off my shoulders it was almost like i could say that i know what it feels like to be like a bird being free being able to fly high to be able to explore I just felt just so much peace after I did that. I really, really, really did because it's been something that I kind of wanted to do for a while. I was just so nervous about it. And so how I teach you all, and I, I talk about, you know, everybody is you pushed out. In my story, on my journey, on purpose, I practice what I preach. And I remember I posted a video on here that said, um, tell no one. <laughs> because you don't want to be entertaining doubt and timers along the way. Everybody's going to be projecting your thoughts. When you're trying to do manifest manifesting, you tell no one, you know, because if you have this, this, this little doubt, it's going to express itself outside. And I didn't want to be in a position where I'm meeting up with my doubt and timers because I remember last year when I was excited about this here place, I begin to kind of like speak about it before I even got serious about meditating or anything or manifesting it I spoke on it and somebody told me you know you're not about to quit this here good job huh you you'd be crazy if you was to leave this job don't you do that <laughs> and so it's something that that stuck with me and so when other people are speaking to me I pay attention to how I feel and how my inner 
dialogue with my inner dialogue or my habitual thought is seen about that and I immediately said no that is you that is your fear that is not my fear <laughs> maybe you didn't you think this is everything but I believe that there's life outside of here so I didn't allow what I'm saying is that thought to penetrate inside of me and become a part of me. What I did is I shut my mouth and I never spoke about it to nobody again because I didn't want to hear those type of things no more. And see, oftentimes we want to be blabber mouths. We want to tell everybody our beautiful ideas. But that's the beautiful thing that I love about being an introverted person. I know how to keep things inside of me and not just have a hole at the bottom of my mouth just allowing everybody to know what my next move is and I think that's really important people don't talk about that a lot but I think it is really important when you're trying to manifest when you are studying the laws of assumption tell no one this is you having a relationship with you 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 um, something with God your inner being so to speak and so the people outside of you just 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 illusions you you really here all alone <laughs> this is really your kingdom your little universe so you don't want to have all of them disciples per se, just like Jesus did, even including the one who betrayed him. You don't want to have all of them disciples on your journey, giving you this and giving you that. You want to go in. You want to go in and deal with your own thoughts by yourself. You don't need them to be projecting themselves outside of you. You don't need them to be cutting up outside of you. So shh, tell no one. <laughs> and so I think I, I just wanted to say that because that is so, so, so important. And so I, I, I shut up about it. I went to sleep, living in the inn with it. I knew and felt like I had it already in the daytime. And what happens is life draws those experiences to you. So that's why it's really no, not much doing, it's just being. The only really, the, the doing is only gonna be when you get that, that, um, that something said kind of like a uh, voice that tells you that that we call it the some people in religion they'll call it the holy ghost per se but it's when you get that sweet still voice like when you get in tuned and it's like something told me to just book of light i don't know why i'm doing it something told me when you get that that's when you do to do it that's the only time you do the doing. But outside of that, you're really just being. You're just being in alignment with what it is that you are desiring until it shows up in your physical reality. <laughs> and surrendering. Yeah. You got to remember to surrender too. So you can't be walking around in the physical reality talking about, man, it ain't never coming. I mean, I'm trying. I don't know if this thing working. You got to surrender to the idea of everything being all right already. Of having it already and being okay like say for example if you wanted a car being okay with having to catch the bus right now yeah you gotta kind of like being okay with it see some people might think that being okay with catching the bus when wanting a car is gonna keep you catching the bus no it's gonna keep you it's gonna allow you rather to get that car faster but you gotta be okay you can't be bitching about catching the bus when you want the car because you feel like you have the car already. So just find joy in the journey of going to the bus stop temporarily because this is your old thoughts. This is why you're going to the, you gotta look at it like this here because this is why you're going to the bus stop because you had those old thoughts of being at that bus stop. So you did create going to that bus stop. So be okay with it in that now moment, but rest assured that the car is here. It's already been created because of everything has already been created in the beginning of the so-called creation. Because energy is not created. It's simply transformed. So all our work here in the physical reality has to do with transforming the energy of what is to whatever it is you want it to be. <laughs> yeah, that. That's our work. That's our work. Every day. Thought by thought by thought by thought. Every day. That's all we're doing here. Since the foundation of the world, in the beginning was the word, which was an expression of thought. Thought by thought by another thought, because God said, let there be. That was another thought. Then let there be this. Let there be moon. Let there be sun. Let there be water. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be is just saying, okay, I got another thought. <laughs> That's all we're doing. Because this is really just a subconscious journey that we're on. Subconscious, conscious mind connecting with subconscious mind, connecting back to the super conscious mind that's it so it's always going to be thought let me see 
Let's see, did I miss some comments up here? Congratulations, okay. I'm scared but excited about what's about to come to this place. What say you? Uh, scared but excited. Scared of what? <laughs> scared of what? What part are you scared of? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I had some fears that are unknown and I'm, you know, I'm not bragging about that because fear is actually the opposite of faith, but there is some fear in the unknown of uncertainty of what is to come in your journey sometimes, yeah. But on the other side of fear, just like I was just mentioning a minute ago about sending out that email, yeah, I felt a little, you know, nervous. I felt a little fearful because I had been on that particular job for 22 years and, and not being on, on that program anymore at the same time, waking up at the same time, having the same work schedule. Yeah, you kind of get a little nervous and you might you might call that fear. But on the other side of that fear that I was just telling you about became the most exciting moment of my life. Remember, I just spoke of, you know, feeling as free as a bird. So we really got to pay attention to the moments when we have fear. We really got to walk into fear because how we destroy that fear is facing that fear. That's going to be the, the way you destroy it. You got to stand up to that thing. If you don't stand up to that thing, then guess what? You, you, you have to take that lesson. You have to go back to that class all over again because life's going to repeat that lesson to you. Because emotionally, you kept that emotion of fear. And so fear does create. It just creates what you do not want. So that means you got to get some more fear in that level. We got to scare her again. Because she didn't do this with ease. She didn't walk into that thing. You see? And so we, if you pay attention, that's what we, some people be doing over and over again. Like some people that don't care for their job, for example. They go on a certain job. Maybe they have messy friends or whatever. Or co-workers on the job. And then they think, okay, I'm leaving this job. And I'm going to another job. Because I can't stay in these messy people. And then guess what? They end up at another job with messy people another job messy people and lo and behold now they are so disgruntled and they're like so many people out there is messy no you didn't learn a lesson yet you went to every job and you complained about all of them people when really life happens through you and you let all of them people outside of you trigger you so you didn't learn a lesson so that means the universe or your subconscious mind got to give you that again until you pass that level in your journey so gotta give you some more messy people until you get to the point where you love your job you could go to your job with ease you could not worry about the messy eggs people they you just still look at the people through the eyes of god and you do your work and you just think okay i'm doing what i love to do i'm here because i'm getting the amount of money that i want to receive and I'm going to enjoy this here journey. And when you can see them over there choo-shooing and being messy, you can put your headsets on and just still have a lovely day. That's when you learn how to pass the test. <laughs> and then guess what? Then you'll probably end up in a job next that they ain't got no mess of people. Everything is really, really peaceful. One or two things going to happen. You're going to get moved to another place where you really want to be even the more. Or they're going to get shifted out of your reality. They're going to get fired. They're going to have to move. Something's going to happen to move you from them because now no longer are you vibing on the same frequency as those people and congratulations you learned a lesson <laughs> let's see let's see come on sister you are dropping so many gems <laughs> hey how you doing the universal woman oh i love that username let's see yes the unknown and uncertainty yeah but you know what we are eternal beings we've been doing this thing for eons and eons, if you see the fear is coming from the unknown and uncertainty. And I'm not saying that I am greater than. I have mastered a lot, but I'm, you know, I'm still on a journey in the physical reality is what I'm saying. But if you think about it like this here, the fears of the uncertainty and the unknown, trust and believe you've died before. <laughs> so I, I think that's what I do. I think about the fact that, you know what, I know I've died before. I know I have. I know I've been here for eons and eons because I have so much of deja vu and I have this old soul and I feel like I'm tapped into infinite intelligence. I feel like I'm a little different from other people. And so I, I feel with that wisdom that I have that, I, yeah, I've been here before. Yeah. So even with that so-called uncertainty and unknown lies the fact that I've already died. Most people did that. That'd be their biggest thing, you know, fear of dying, so to speak. And so you, when you realize, man, I've already died. I haven't been here eons and eons. Well, really, what is, okay, if I die, well, guess what? I'll be back. <laughs> you know, I, I was stood to death already. 
I'll transform into something else. And then when you embrace the fact that even though there's an uncertainty in the physical reality, you think about the religious aspect of it and you could say, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because you're an eternal being. They can't get rid of you when you transform, when you realize that you're just energy anyway, and you realize and understand that, you know, energy is not created, no destroyed, it's simply transform. Well, I'm going to be in another form. <laughs> Maybe I won't have an avatar in my next form, but I'm going to always be. I'm going to always be. I'm going to always exist. And so really, when you go general is what I'm saying. When you go general on it, you could chop down that fear of whatever it is and wherever it is coming from. It, if this is it, you could say things like, if this is it, I'm going out with a bang. If this is it, I'm going to live and walk into my passion. If this is it, I'm, I'm going to do this very thing that I, I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you turn that fear into something called faith. <laughs> because fear is the opposite of faith. And you just have faith knowing that, you know, I'm going to live the, bless, my, the best of my life. The rest of my life going to be the best of my life. And you just transform it, thought by thought by thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand, no, I, I, I totally do. Let's see. Enjoy your journey, my love. I like that username. Yes, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But yeah, I'm not exempt. It's just that I wholeheartedly, my whole purpose is to work on my passion in this lifetime. My purpose, self-fulfillment. That's the most important thing for me in my physical reality, you know, and I have always been this way, really, even as a little girl. And I was always just different, always had older, even when I was like 12, 13 years old, all my friends was like, you know, older people, older ladies and stuff in their 40s and stuff. And they always said I was a little old soul, so to speak. But I always been intuitive, inquisitive, so to speak and wanted to know more about spirituality. Even when I was in church, in religion, I always wanted, but back then you couldn't ask too many questions. I always wanted to know, well, why? And so in that walk of faith, you know, you get boxed upside your head when you ask the elders, why? But even after I got boxed upside my head for questioning God, so to speak, I would still say to the elders, like, okay, so now since you slapped me, are you gonna tell me? Or, you, or is you saying you don't know? <laughs> That's the kind of child I was because I wanted to know. And so when I became older, you know, I kind of went on my own journey to figure out the answers to what the elders didn't want to tell me. And I wanted to know because it resonated with me, because it felt good with me. I didn't want to know no answer or hear nothing being told to me that um, because I said so. What the hell? Who are you saying so? You know, I want to know so. What you mean because you said so and then i as a little girl looking at you and, and you the same person that come to church because i was the usher in the church you the same person that come to church and always you know needing healing needing you know financial breakthrough and i'm supposed to listen to you because you said you said so but i see clearly in your physical reality that there's some things that are stumbling blocks in your journey and you want me as a little girl just to chuck it up to i said so and so i didn't want to hear that no more and so that's really why I got into religion. And, and, and this is the part, I, this is the part. Like I was talking about the yin and the yang, the giving and receiving in the beginning of this message. It's so important that to know this about me, then you can judge me if you want. You're really just judging yourself. When I say this, I come from religion. And the first place that I wanted to go was the dark match into the darkness. And why did I want to go there? Because everybody was using them scare tactics about, you know, hell and the devil and then, you know, boogeyman per se. Well, I wanted to study him, you know, because even like the church people, they would always say it because I said so. And in my little youthful mind, it was like, they ass don't know. So I'm going to go find out. And if I go to this so-called hell, I'm going to take one for the team. At least I'll find out something. <laughs> and so, and so that's when I learned about, you know, spell work and the ancestors and dark magic, so to speak, and energy and conjuring up witches, so to speak, because I wanted to know. And it was not that I wanted to be a demon or because I wanted to spew hate on anybody, because I didn't even go to that level, but I wanted to learn the art of it all. You know, you, 
even 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 with football teams, they sit there and they, they study the other team to see the, those team members' weaknesses and stuff. Nobody seemingly in church knew nothing but because I said so. They just trusting in his holy word, so to speak. And I just wanted to know how 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 things worked on the other side for me to excel, for me to do dare to be some or do something different than everybody else that was surrounded by me in the church doing their own thing, praying, kind of like still getting the same results. Meanwhile, I'm going to school as a little girl and I have friends that never had to go to school and quiet practice and be the camera girl and be the usher and be the pastor's assistant, assistant and be the treasurer and all of these things that I had to do and, and couldn't go to the little parties and it, because I always had other things lined up in church. I see all of my other friends and it just didn't add up to me. They were prospering. They were healthy. They were happy. And they wasn't doing all of that church stuff. You know? And so I, I, I had more questions even after that. Like, no. No. So, so am I supposed to think that my friends, all of my friends are just going to go to hell because they ain't been to church as much as me? No. Something I write about this here. And so question after question, thought after thought. This is why I often like to put things on people's mind. You do what you want to do on your journey, but I like to stimulate that thought in people. Give you that thought because I know that that thought will give life to another thought and another thought because it's feminine energy and it's going to give birth to other thoughts. And when you begin to think, you begin to tiptoe outside of your box of limited thinking. And your consciousness begin to expand for yourself, not because I said so, or not because the elder said so, because that's something you wanted to do and know or experience for yourself. And to experience it, it's like you jumping down or going down that rabbit hole and you realize that that rabbit hole really, really runs deep. And even though it runs deep, you can never get it wrong. But while you're deep inside of it, it changes for you based upon what you're thinking when you're in it. <laughs> So if you in that rabbit hole and you thinking all these negative thoughts, then it's going to get a little dark for you. It's going to get a little scary for you. You're going to want to get out of that rabbit hole because it's going to be like almost like you going to the pit of hell. And see, I've already been through hell with those negative thoughts. So I already know how those things go. You want to excel, you want to be able to excel and exceed that by going down the rabbit hole and keeping positive thoughts. And then you got to have ex exciting experiences. And then you could experience joy and bliss and peace and love. Even orgasmic type experiences in your rabbit hole. That's how, that's how good feeling it feels in your physical body, in your spiritual body. Based upon where your thoughts are. Based upon letting this mind be in you instead of the negative mind being in you. Because we're all having an experience based upon our thoughts. We are all either in heaven or in hell based upon our thoughts. That's it. Let's see. Uh oh, I didn't hit a button on here. Let's see. Thank you. If I had the same experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you have because we are a collective consciousness here. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Any questions? Anything? Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Queens. I'm sorry, I missed your name. They got a, hey, Doc Woods. They got a glare on this, uh, this, uh, screen. But before I go, I just went to the front door and maybe this person is here. I didn't open it yet. I, I don't know what this here is, but let me grab a, uh, a knife. I got another here at the front door. Let me grab this knife. Hey, Doc Woods. That I'm about to open right away from my Amazon wish list. I've been posting these on my um, TikToks. And I got, oh, a glass set. Let me open this right quick. I thought these were so cute. <laughs> I thought these were so cute. But when I'm outside in the sun, I have me some little glasses. They're shaped like little can, like cold drink can. And I put them on my um my wish list. Let me see. I'm opening it up. Thank you for saving a child. Oh, that's not who it's from. Oh, here they go. Look at this here, y'all. 
Somebody bought me these. I like these because they shaped like a little cold drink. Not that I drink cold drink, but I just thought it was cute. So somebody sent me that from my um my Amazon wish list drinking glasses. It's a six-piece set can-shaped glass cups. But I don't see the name. Oh, okay. Hello, sis. I'm so proud of you and congratulations on all of your amazing manifestations. I hope you enjoy your gift. P.S. Thank you for the inspiration. I'm right behind you. From Renee. Oh, Renee McCoy. If you're here, thank you, baby. I appreciate you. I'm going to have to snap that off of here and post it on my TikTok. Thank you for the gift, Renee. I really appreciate you. I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen your name. I'm going to have to search for you. I'm going to have to search for you in my um, newsletter, my contact list, and send you a thank you if you're not on TikTok. But I really appreciate the gift. I appreciate everything, all the nice words, the congratulations. I really appreciate you all being part of my journey. And, and, I, and, oh, and I want to say this here to one of my reflections because everyone is me pushed out, remember? And so maybe maybe there's a part of me, an old version of me that, you know, sometimes you just sit back and you kind of like probably would say, well, she must, you know, she must be special, so to speak. You know, or maybe, well, why God didn't, you know, do such and such for me? Like, so what I want to say to you, reflection is, what God has done for, what God has done for others, God can do, can and will do for you. But you got to understand that God is within, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is in your subconscious mind, in your thoughts, your habitual thoughts, right? And so... If you sit there and you think about me and me, even when you see people getting married, people getting gifts, whatever, what are we supposed to do? If this is something that you want, like say for example, let's not do me, let's do somebody that's getting married or getting your dream car, something that you want. If you sit there and you think about why I didn't get it, how much longer it's gonna be for me, what you're really doing is creating but you're creating your manifestation to be pushed back longer. <laughs> okay? So what you want to do instead when you see people, you know how you see people in the comments, they'd be like, hello God, it's me again. And they think that's funny, but it's really not funny because you push it back your manifestation when you do those type of things. What you're supposed to be doing when you see people excelling in the area of life where you want to be, you're supposed to milk it. You're supposed to feel the joy with that person. You're supposed to feel the love, excitement, or whatever it is with that person as if you experiencing it. So you basically, you're transforming that energy. You, you, you're using that energy of love or excitement that they already have. And you're allowing it to, to penetrate in your heart. You are feeling it with them. This is how you create. You're looking at it on the TikTok screen. So or you already see it. You, you're experiencing it in your heart. You already feel it because this is why you're probably saying, why, why, God, when it's going to be my turn? So what I'm saying is use that energy that you see and sit there and be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I like how he's looking at her in her eyes if you want a man or something. Oh, yeah, I love that car right there. Oh, it's smooth. Look at those airline wheels. Look at the, the leather stitching. Look, look at whatever it is on the car that you want. What The dream house or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. You milk the feeling with them. Be excited with them. Comment with them. Be happy with them. So that whatever it is you want, it'll come to you with ease. Because if not, now you got to work on your jealousy first before you're going to get your thing. Now you got to work on the fact that you just delayed your thing because you're complaining about your thing. Stop being happy for people as if it's you because really everybody is you pushed out. And when you start seeing it over and over, you know how some people say, always the bridesmaid, never the bride per se, never the bride per se, they'll say that. Well, it's going to be never if you always seeing it and you always having that negative shitty ass thought that, oh, it's never me. You're creating that. Up. Uh, I guess I gotta be a bridesmaid again. You're creating that again and again. Stop doing that to yourself is what I'm saying to you. 
You're not going to get ahead like that. Because see, they have people up there. I see 16 up there. They have people up there. They probably were up there. They're probably still up there. They probably left and, you know, they don't see me open up no gift. They ain't got time for that. They ain't a gift for me. You know, they have people like that. And they have some people in that box up there that ain't even going to say nothing. They're just going to look. And they're going to have the negative thought. But remember that negative shitty thinking that you projecting, you think you're projecting at me? Baby, life is happening through you. You really just projected it as you. Because on earth as it is in heaven, <laughs> as within, so without. You think you're hurting me out here? No, baby. No, I'm just your subconscious mind talking to you, helping you on your journey. You help hurting you. That's your kingdom over there. I'm taking care of my kingdom with my thoughts. That's why you can't penetrate over here. Make sure you monitor no shitty ass thoughts. Please don't hate on other people, especially me because I come to inspire you. I come to breathe life into you. This energy that I'm ex extending to you, I'm extending it to you so you could transform the energy and do something for you. Not to be braggadocious. If you really know me, if you really been day one with me, you'll know that I'm, I'm an introvert. <laughs> I don't, it, it's, it's been years and very hard for me to, to let people in my world. This is a lot for me to do, but I'm only doing it because I know that I can inspire somebody. You think I wanted to share my business with y'all? I don't know y'all like that there, but I know that there's somebody in that journey that is an expression of me, a reflection of me where I was. Where I heard it, where I lacked that. And I want to be able to touch her or him energetically and speak life into her or him and let them know, hey, I was just I was just like that. And guess what? I had to fix this right here. If I wanted my situation to change, I had to do this here. It'll be cute, and I know I have a lot more people on here if I was talking about the narcs of the world and how everybody outside of the world needs to fix themselves and how this is shitty and how that is shitty and look what they're doing in the government and look what, look what they're doing with the high prices. Oh, I'll get a lot of people then. Oh, I'll get a lot of people if I talk about the black man. Oh, I'll get a lot of people if I talk about the, the heavy set black women and they don't want to do nothing, all this crazy stuff here. No, I'm not going to talk about myself because at the end of the day, that's what I be doing. Talking about myself because life happens through me. I have a lot of people then, so I understand that. If I wanted to twist my message, I know how to get a lot of people. But no, I want to touch somebody's life. I want to inspire people. I want people to be accountable for themselves. It, it's gone on the days where you're just going to blame everything on everybody outside of you. Remember that song, Matt, Mike, with Michael Jackson? I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Not, a lot of people don't want to do that because I remember when I was a little girl and I was in church and I, and I would hear pastor tell the people in the church, well, you got to change this and that and the third. As a little girl, I paid attention to what the people did and guess what? Most of the people left the church at that time because nobody didn't want to change nothing about themselves. Oh, I ain't doing this here. Oh, I, I'm comfortable with this shitty mindset right here. I'm just going to look at everybody and blame my shitty life on everybody else when all day long, all I think is shitty thoughts. And I'm going to just hate on this person for getting ahead in life. What the hell she thinks she doing over there? Who the hell she thinks she is over there? Yeah, I'm going to do that to my reflections. But I'm not going to stand in the mirror and realize that I'm being shitty. That I'm not looking at other people through the eyes of God. That, that life is happening through me. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to hold that mirror up and look at me like that. There's, there's, nobody don't want to do that, but I encourage you to try that because that's the only way that you're going to get from at the bottom of that barrel. When you try, you can try everything else, but you got to try God <laughs> and you are God. When you get tired of trying, why don't you try God? You talk about how much you love God, and I've watched this all of my life, how people that love God so much go through so much hell because they never really tried God. They didn't try God. No, they wanted to try things outside of themselves. But the biblical text always told me, and it told you too, that the kingdom of God is in me. So it's time to try God. Oh, it's time to try God. I encourage you to try God. Somebody try God. <laughs> you 
you won't be disappointed if you try God. I promise you, you God, I wouldn't be on here talking. Because I got things to do. I got a packing to do. Try God. Whew, that was beautiful. Let's see. Let's see. Did I miss any comments up in here? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Facts, amen. I, we was having church up in here, huh? Look, somebody said 20. Stephen 20. We had church, amen, huh? Divine description. Okay, okay. Y'all have some good user names today. All right, well, yes, I have to look at myself. Definitely. We all have to really look at ourselves. And when we look at ourselves and begin to make change, everything outside of us going to begin to change. And then it, it, we could probably get back to that nervous energy again. Then we're going to get back to that kind of like fear of that unknown per se like we was just talking about but we gotta walk into it we gotta walk into it yeah we gotta keep on walking we gotta keep on facing that fear because things gonna change life as you know it gonna change i see a lot of people that's why i feel like a lot of people don't want to come out of their limited way of thinking because they're so used to the program and they really get comfortable with the program because they know what time they got to do this. They know how this is going to feel. Yeah, yeah. They got their friends over here. But when you change the way you're thinking and, and you do something different, you, you're going to lose some friends. Yeah, you're going to lose some friends. And then, then, then you, you, you're you not going to have the same schedule no more. Things going to get a little different and, and a little scary. And you got to face your fears. All your little skeletons going to come falling out the closet. And you <laughs> gotta make sure that you destroy all of them and deal with all of them accordingly. Because you the person that put them in that closet. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing because the beauty in it is the fact that you are soaring again. The beauty in it is that the fact that you are supping with God again. The beauty in it is that your subconscious makes that union that they were talking about in the biblical text. I mean, the biblical text, the union of that, that bride and groom, so to speak, is equivalent to that subconscious meeting, that superconscious. The union of one Jesus in the biblical text was saying, I and the Father are one. <laughs> and really, that's what you came here for in the physical reality to create that union again. To remember again. Yes. Okay, I keep on going back in, but I'm about to get off of here. Let's see. The Most High gave me that name. Oh, really? I love it. It's perfect. It's so perfect. Man, the things I'm going through right now, I would love to talk to you one day. Oh, who is that? V. V. Dyke? Okay, okay. Go to what my website and book a consultation. I've been doing, that's really all I've been doing. I haven't been selling my products, but I have still been doing consultations at www.sawtheearthpub.org. And um, yeah, you can sign up for a consultation. I'd love to talk to you, babe. We all need somebody at, at you know, different points in our journey to talk to. And I know I once did. That's why I opened up that avenue to be able to talk to my reflection because at you know when i was going through my little spiritual walk i didn't have nobody that thought outside of the box i didn't have nobody everybody in my family was you know they was into religion and couldn't talk to them about spirituality because you know they had never explored that and so really i kind of like went in and, and, and read the biblical text and came up with my own meaning that felt good to me i would youtube you know i read books I'll try to find, I will go actually to Barnes and Noble because I was reading so much and I would go in Barnes and Noble and I'll just pick a book based upon what I was going through at the time off the shelf and I'll sit there and I would actually read through the book <laughs> every day, read through the book, looking, searching for answers on that particular subject every day. I would go in there and just read a different book based upon what I had on my mind that day. That's, that's all I had at that time. <laughs> Okay, oh my God, I just talked about the Ruth and Poor story being about union. Yeah, it's, a, it's really all about union. Yeah, that's what it's about. Find what resonates. Yeah, yeah, find what resonates so that we can create our own. You're right, whatever feels good to you. So if I, in your journey, stay, say stuff that don't feel good to you, you go find somebody that feels good to your soul because that's your internal GPS. Because we're all on 
we're all one we're all singing and evolving and singing the same song but some of us it's just going down different paths to get there we all go get to the same place now but some of us like to you know go the scenic route and you know go in the corner sit there for eons and eons some of us pulling trees and stuff some of us waiting on our brother some of us thinking they waiting on god when they all got we all got a little little obstacle course thing going on so if I don't resonate at this point in your journey, I just told somebody yesterday, <laughs> ma'am, we're not on the same path. Go in peace, you know, because you, you, I'm not here to, to argue with you about anything. If I don't say something that resonates with you, you can always swipe. That's the beautiful thing about the TikTok, the talk, about the YouTube, about any, you know, social media platform you're on. You have an internal GPS system. How you feel matters. If you don't feel good over here, bye. I see you at the end or the so-called beginning because we're one and we all gonna get there collectively anyway so see you later alligator <laughs> yeah so yeah that's beautiful all right that's all I have for today thank you all for being here I'm about to go and Get a little bit more sun before the sun go down and finish unpacking and i'll try to come back on on tomorrow manana this video was from my heart to yours be blessed babe <laughs>